All right, buckle up everyone, because today we are taking a deep dive into maritime safety. Ooh, maritime safety. A world where even the tiniest mistake can lead to some pretty massive consequences. Right. And that's not an exaggeration. Mm -hmm. A mind-blowing 75% of maritime incidents wow. can be traced back to human error. That's a big number. It is. It really emphasizes how crucial this topic is. Absolutely. Whether you're a seasoned sailor or just starting out. Yeah, anyone who spends time on the water needs to understand this. For sure. And to help us navigate this complex world, we're turning to the experts. Okay. The Aviation and Nautical Masters Channel. Sounds like a great resource. They really know their stuff, and they're going to guide us through the biggest challenges facing seafarers today. Right. The evolution of safety measures throughout history, and believe me, there are some wild stories stories there. I bet. And the cutting edge technology shaping a safer future on the waves. Technology is really changing the game in maritime safety. It really is. It's incredible how far we've come. You know, it's fascinating when you think about the history of maritime safety. Right. It's full of these stories of incredible innovation. Yeah. But those innovations often came about because of some pretty tragic events. Oh, absolutely. You realize that every regulation, every piece of safety equipment has a story behind it. And often it's a story of lessons learned the hard way. Right. Mistakes were made and we learned from them. Exactly. Hopefully preventing them from happening again. Exactly. And th that brings us to our first big challenge. Yeah, let's talk about that. The untamed power of nature. Nature always keeps things interesting, right? The ways. Uh, we can't control it. Go. No matter how advanced our technology gets, we're always at the mercy of the elements. It's a humbling thought, isn't it? It is. Imagine yourself on a ship in the middle of a raging storm. Oh, I'd be terrified. Waves the size of buildings crashing over the deck. That's the reality for many seafarers, though. It is, and it's not just about wind and waves either. What else is there? Climate change is throwing a whole new set of challenges into the mix. Uh-oh, that's not good. Rising sea levels, more intense storms, unpredictable currents. So it's becoming even more difficult to predict what's going to happen out there. It's like trying to navigate through a constantly changing maze. I can see how that would be stressful. And just when you think you've got a handle on things, there's another unpredictable factor. Us. You. Humans. It's a human element. Bro. Remember that 75% of maritime incidents? Yeah. Well, those are real people making decisions under some seriously intense pressure. Right. Long hours, fatigue, tight schedules. All that. The weight of knowing that one wrong move could have devastating consequences. It's a lot to handle. It is. And it's easy to see how human error can happen. Exactly. Even for the most seasoned seafarer. And it's not always just about negligence. Right. It's about the entire system. Uh -huh. Multiple points where things can go wrong. That makes sense. Can you think of any specific examples where human factors played a role in a maritime accident? Well, the one that immediately springs to mind is the Exxon Valdez oil spill in 1989. Oh, yeah. Of course, mechanical failure played a part. But investigations showed that fatigue and communication issues on the bridge were major factors in the lead up to the disaster. Wow, that's a sobering reminder that even with the best tech and safety equipment, human error can still be the weakest link. It's a crucial lesson for the industry. And that's why the focus has shifted towards solutions. Like what? Things like fatigue management systems, better training programs, and a no-blame culture. A no-blame culture. Where mistakes can be reported and learned from without fear of punishment so that people feel comfortable speaking up if they see something wrong. Exactly. It's about shifting from blame to prevention. That sounds much more effective. But even with the best crew in the world, things can still go south if the ship itself isn't up to scratch. Right. The vessel plays a huge part too. So let's talk about that. the other crucial element in maritime safety. The ships themselves. All right. What about them? Because even the most skilled captain can't overcome a catastrophic mechanical failure. True. We're talking engine failures, holes cracking under pressure, safety equipment malfunctioning at the worst possible moment. Definitely situations you don't want to find yourself in. Like the sinking of the Herald of Free Enterprise back in 1987. What happened there? Human error was involved. They left the bow doors open. But the rapid flooding and the fact that the ferry capsized so quickly 
it really highlighted some serious design flaws. So multiple things went wrong. Exactly. And that's why regular maintenance, inspections, and investment in good infrastructure are so important. It's like maintaining your car. Exactly. You wouldn't <laughs> skip oil changes and ignore warning lights, right? <laughs> Hopefully not. Well, in the maritime world, the stakes are a lot higher. For sure. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, as they say. Very true. And in this case, that pound of cure could be saving lives and preventing environmental disasters. Speaking of prevention, I've heard a lot about predictive maintenance. Oh yeah, predictive maintenance? Is that becoming more common in the maritime industry? Definitely. What is it exactly? Well, imagine a network of sensors monitoring the health of the ship's systems all the time. Constantly checking everything. Engines, hull integrity, even safety equipment performance. And all that data is being analyzed. Right, using sophisticated algorithms. To find problems before they become disasters. Exactly. It's like having a digital doctor for your ship. That's a great way to put it. Constantly checking its vital signs and alerting you to potential issues early on. That's incredible. And this kind of proactive approach to maintenance. Yeah. It could be a game changer for maritime safety. So we've talked about the challenges, but it makes you wonder, how did we even get to a point where transoceanic voyages were possible in the first place? Right, back in the day, things were a lot different. What were the early approaches to maritime safety like? Well, for centuries, it was mostly about tradition. Okay. Experience passed down through generations of seafarers. Right. And let's be honest, a good deal of luck. I can imagine. Those early explorers they were sailing into the unknown. With very basic tools. Navigating by the stars, relying on their gut feelings. It's hard to imagine the courage it must have taken to face the open ocean with such limited knowledge and technology. Absolutely. Those voyages were incredibly dangerous. I bet. Storms, shipwrecks, encounters with hostile forces. It was all part of the journey. And as seafaring became more common, the need for better safety measures became clear, right? It did. We started pushing the boundaries of what was possible and that led to new challenges. Which forced us to innovate and adapt. Exactly. So when did we see a shift towards a more structured approach to maritime safety? Well, there was a pivotal moment in history. What was that? The sinking of the Titanic in 1912. The Titanic, that's a name everyone knows. It was a tragedy that shocked the world. I can imagine. Exposed the flaws in the existing safety regulations. A supposedly unsinkable ship lost to the icy depths of the Atlantic. It was a wake-up call, a stark reminder that even the most advanced technology couldn't overcome human error and a lack of proper safety measures. So it was a turning point. Absolutely. The world needed a new approach to maritime safety. And that's where SOLAS comes in. SOLAS! Yes, it stands for the International Convention for the Safety of Life at Sea. So it's like the Maritime Safety Bible. You could say that. It's a set of international regulations governing virtually every aspect of ship design, construction, equipment, and operation. All aimed at preventing maritime casualties. Precisely. It's about being proactive, not just reacting to disasters. And the impact of SOLAS has been huge, hasn't it? Oh, absolutely. It's led to standardization of life-saving appliances, better fire safety, stricter requirements for navigation equipment, and so much more. For example? One of the most significant changes after the Titanic was the requirement for ships to carry enough lifeboats for everyone on board. Makes sense, but that wasn't always the case. No, it was a revolutionary concept back then. Wow, and SOLAS is still evolving, right? Constantly. It's a living document, adapting to new challenges and technologies. But it's not just about regulations. Right. The human element is still crucial. Absolutely. And that's where modern approaches like bridge resource management, or BRM, come in. BRM, that sounds pretty official. It is. It's all about optimizing communication, teamwork, and decision-making on the bridge to minimize human error. Okay, so it's about improving how the crew works together exactly. in a high-pressure environment. Training crews to communicate effectively, share information, anticipate problems, and work together seamlessly to navigate difficult situations. It sounds like taking those team-building exercises you see in corporate retreats and applying them to the high-stakes world of maritime navigation. You could say that, but BRM goes deeper than that. Okay. It's about recognizing that even the most experienced captain isn't perfect. Right that effective teamwork is essential for safety at sea. And that's a great place to pause our deep dive for now. Uh, We've covered a lot of ground. We have From the unpredictable forces of nature to the complexities of human error and the evolution of safety regulations like SOLAS and BRM. A good overview of the basics. But stay tuned, because when we return, we'll be diving into the exciting world of maritime technology and how it's shaping a safer future for everyone on the high seas. Looking forward to it. 
Until then, think about the challenges we've discussed and consider how human ingenuity and determination have shaped the way we approach safety at sea. We'll be back soon to continue our exploration. See you then.